welcome and thank you so much for clicking on this video. I appreciate your time. I hope that I can explain what I'm going to talk about today easily without getting too muddled up or being too confusing. For that reason, I have my notes. This is a follow-up video on my TDS, keeping the measurement of TDS parts per million simple, making it easy to understand. And in that video, I mentioned that I would be happy to do a comparison between the EC unit as a measurement and the PPM as a measurement. So David McMillan took me up on that offer. And this is the video to make true on my promise that I would do a video if there was interest. Everything I'm going to talk about today is going to sound like one big mumble jumble of words, terminologies, different kinds of letters, which I will try to edit onto screen so that if my pronunciation is wrong, you can at least see what I'm talking about. But let me just put it out there. Pretend that the units we're measuring are either metric or imperial. For example, most of the world measures everything in metric, and then you've got the United States that measures still in imperial. So they have ounces and yards and miles, and we have kilograms, meters, and kilometers. Basically, when it comes to measuring using microsiemens or PPM, that is it. That is exactly the same thing. So I just want to make that clear that whatever unit you are using, it is not wrong. They both measure the same thing. It's just by way of expression that they differ. So let's just get into that. So in layman's terms, we know that TDS is the combined total of solids. It is also the combined total of salts. So if you were to hear somebody say total dissolved salts and you are used to hearing total dissolved solids, it's one and the same thing. So EC, electrical conductivity, is the ability of something to conduct electricity. So based on measuring TDS, know that with the meters that we're using, we're just getting a basic range because the only true method of measuring TDS is to weigh residue found in water after the water has evaporated. But in order to measure some form of total dissolved solids in our water, we need an electrical charge, and that is an abbreviation is EC. And this is where EC comes into play. It is the ability of something to conduct electricity. In this case, water's ability to conduct electricity, reading as units of millisiemens per centimeter, which you would see defined as ms per centimeter, or microsiemens per centimeter. Electrical conductivity is a proxy measurement to determine the TDS in water. Some of the confusion with using EC is that it can be expressed in different units. The units might be referenced as micromos per centimeter and millimos per centimeter, or microsiemens per centimeter and millisiemens per centimeter. And this is where EC can throw people off and think, I don't know what I'm looking at. Basically, one millimos per centimeter is one millisiemens per centimeter, and 1,000 micromos per centimeter correlate to 1,000 microsiemens per centimeter. Whereas the units for TDS are usually expressed as milligrams per liter, which is the same as parts per million. Some TDS meters show parts per thousand, which is equal to 1,000 parts per million. So let me break that down. An EC is a decimal unit of electrical conductivity, which by definition is equal to one microsiemens per centimeter. So one EC is one microsiemens per centimeter. And this is the unit which is often used on conductivity meters made in the United States. In chemistry, parts per million is often used to describe the relative quantity of minerals dissolved in water. This unit is widely used in TDS meters, which are in actual fact conductivity meters. TDS meters were made mostly for the European market. So you see where I'm coming from with regards to imperial versus metric measuring. The two are exactly the same. They will get you the same result, except one was made for one market and the other for another. Both units or readings are now widely used and for simplicity, TDS and parts per million have become more popular and supposedly easier to understand. So breaking this down, EC is the best way to display the TDS of nutrient solution because it is a universal unit. Unlike PPM, which is EC times 0.5 if you were to convert it, or EC 0.7. Now, this is where it gets interesting if up to now you're bored to tears, but understanding 
these two different scales is important. Since there are two different conversions of EC to PPM, PPM becomes an unreliable way to describe Newton concentration because you never know whether someone is using the same scale as you are. So to break that down, imagine if I were to talk about my nutrient solution in EC unit and you were to convert that into parts per million to get an understanding of how concentrated my nutrient solution is which conversion scale would you be using parts per million again is either ec times 0.5 or ec times 0.7 and i'm going to leave a link in the description below of a parts per million ec conversion formula which you can just type in your values and you will get the results right then and there so just theoretically 2000 ecs times 0.5 if i were to say that is what i'm fertilizing my orchids at in my videos would equate to 1000 parts per million but using the conversion scale of 0.7 2000 ec would come out at 1,400 parts per million. So do you now see, even though EC is a universal unit, why the majority stick with parts per million? Because it removes the variable of conversion, allowing for a better across the board understanding and comparison of what we use in our nutrient solution. So personally, getting the concentration for a nutrient solution for one of our orchids is something that does not need to be so precise because the amount of fertilizer we apply to our orchids is so, so minimal that the PPM value is sufficient and pretty much universal for most orchid growers. Although EC is a much more accurate and precise reading, the conversion for comparison's sake is variable. It is quite unreliable if we wanted to get it exact. Are you going to be using 0.5 scale to convert? or 0.7. So now, having heard all this with regards to EC and the four different units that it can be measured at, plus the two different variables of conversion scale to PPM, if I tell you that I fertilize my orchids with 100 parts per million, you can replicate that if you would like to, but at least you can relate to the parameter easier than if I were to tell you I'm fertilizing at 1000 microsiemens. If I were to tell you 1000 micro siemens, your next question should be, should I convert 0.5 scale or by the 0.7 scale? And for the sake of simplicity and easy understanding, using PPM is absolutely sufficient for us as a unit to measure the concentration of our nutrient solution. Now, not trying to throw a wrench into all of this, but a fact, no matter which unit you use, know that the temperature of your water will affect the reading. The warmer the water, the higher the electrical conductivity, which will result in a reading that differs if the same solution were to be measured at a cold temperature. So keep your reading consistent for your purposes. Always measure your nutrient solution at room temperature, at least that gives you a baseline. I hope that makes sense. When we say our orchids don't like cold water, so that takes that part out of the equation already anyway. And room temperature can be anywhere from 18 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, depending on whether you're using a heater or air conditioning winter, summer respectively. But to maintain a steady temperature where you do your parts per million reading or your EC reading, that gives you your baseline as to you know that today I'm fertilizing at 100 or 300 parts per million and not based on what the temperature of your water is. So I'm hoping that you got an understanding of the difference of the two units that measure our total dissolved solids in our water. Basically, we run under the same parameters, but one, and that could be me being biased because I'm in Europe, is easier to understand universally, which is parts per million, as opposed to EC, which has four different breakdown of units to read from. They all say the same thing, but it's just a different breakdown of readings, even though the results are the same. And if I were to convert, I would then have to consider 0.5 scale or the 0.7 scale. And personally, this hobby is already complicated enough trying to get these beauties to grow in an environment where they're not familiar and comfortable with. I would like to just keep my watering down to a very, very simple, happy medium and parts per million just works for me. If I tell you 300 parts per million is in my solution, you know what you're up against. 
If I tell you I put 300 parts per million in my solution that is 10 degrees Celsius in temperature, know that that is cold water. And if I were to raise the water temperature to an agreeable 23 or 25 degrees, those 300 parts per million could easily double if not triple. But at least with parts per million, I have that factor and temperature to take into consideration. I don't have four different units to think about, plus two options of what to convert in order to get an understanding of what the total dissolved solids are in my water. I hope that made sense. If not, the comments are there for a reason. If you have anything to add to what I've just said, also, please voice that in your comments. I'd be very happy to continue the dialogue in the comments below. And David McMillan, I hope I somewhat broke it down to describe the difference between the two, even though both of them are measuring total dissolved solids. Let me know what you think. I appreciate your opinion very, very much, the time that you took to watch, listen to this video. And I wish you a beautiful, beautiful day, but on one condition, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.